Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi there, I'm Bill Jordan. Pleased and honored to be back with Art and John on another rousing edition of Celebrating Act 2. Well, Hello. Bill, thank you for the introduction. Yeah, uh, and you know what? compliment you. Thank you very much, uh, Bill. Uh, uh, th this book, you can get at Amazon, and uh, the cup, you can get some. We'll get into that later. So I have a question for you. Uh, 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 we, we've, we've talked about uh, uh, cleaning out garages and to-do lists and a whole bunch of stuff over the years. Um, but it seems that um, uh, there are some things that we just never get rid of and won't get rid of for one reason or another. For instance, uh, uh, like books. Uh, there must be some books that we probably haven't picked up in years. Uh, I have a book that I pick up maybe once every two years because it's made a big impact on my life called uh, In the Blink of an Eye by Walter Murch. As a matter of fact, uh, here I have a copy over here. Uh, not that it's spectacular for any particular reason other than he was a pioneer uh, film editor and he goes into talking about that film is really a whole bunch of individual shots and therefore because he studied it so much and became a great editor where he'll make a cut in a movie that's important to me not to most other people even to my son who's a professional in the business he read it once but he he practices it but ju just something about picking up this book every so often is important to me and i have several books like that uh but uh, we walk into my house and you'll see hundreds of books on the shelves most of which we never read anymore do you have any stuff like that? Oh, uh, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, what, what, and there's like an old, uh, saying about, you know, a good book is like an old friend. I mean, there are some mm. books that, uh, you know, and I get the whole thing with the Kindles and the Nooks and all that stuff and the digital copies, but I love to hold a book. Yeah. And I know that there's yeah. ways on a digital book to highlight things and stuff, but I like the feel and holding of a book. Yeah. Uh, I also have them on Kindle, but there are books that I like to hold. Um, so books that I would say, first of all, I guess if you are a person of faith, a book that would be uh, relevant to your faith would be a book that you would want to keep mm -hmm. uh, and have and not just check out at the library or borrow from a friend or whatever, but actually to, to have. That's just my opinion. Um, I think the gold standard for human relations is Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. And that's never a bad book to pick up and just flip through. And uh, the, the, actually, the copy I've got is a dual book compendium, if that's the word, of how to win friends and influence people and how to stop worrying and start living, both by Dale Carnegie. And I think they're both like they're, they're Bibles of human relation, uh, of relations with others and with ourselves as far as the worrying component. That book that I read, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living, which was the first Dale Carnegie book I read, I read it at 23 or 24 years old, and it changed my life to where I do go back and reread at least parts of it uh, upon occasion. Uh, those books are super important. We keep talking about this book, Atomic Habits. I can't imagine not ever having a copy of that book just for little booster shots, if for nothing else. Those are the ones that uh, immediately come to mind. How about you guys? Uh, I've got a bookshelf behind me um, in my office filled with really what I call business books. They're all reference books, uh, a couple of um, encyclopedia of films, things like that. But um, Walt, I have Walter Murch's book that uh, Art has, things like that. Um, but we have, uh, we're, my wife and I are big readers of mysteries, no, uh, mystery novels. And so we'll have, at any time, we'll have 20 or 30 uh, mystery novels by, I think, maybe six different authors. And we keep them in a, in a our little library, if you will. And then we'll rotate them because we don't, you know, we're not, mo mostly we read paperbacks. Um, we have a lot of hardcovers, which we've kept, but really they're, they're not... Um, they're not. We're not keeping them like uh, like you would the Dale Carnegie book, or a Bible. You know, the Bible is a different category, I think. Right. Um, so you know, we do have a lot of books, and we have a kind of two or three libraries around the house. 
uh, this being my business library, if you will. But we do keep we do tend to keep the books that we we refer back to, as opposed to the novels which come and go. Right, right. Mm. You know, it's kind of interesting um, uh, thinking of this in a slightly different way. Um, I also have uh, well, you can see the bookshelf. Uh, one of the bookshelves in my office is behind my shoulder, uh, and I've been beginning to empty out. A lot of them and bring them to the library of things that we just don't read anymore. So I've begun to think of one of the books I would absolutely hold on to in the blink of an eye is one of them. Uh, the J. A. Jantz, there are 70 books in the series that both John and I, I I've read the complete series uh, and we've exchanged them back and forth and purchased a few. But whenever we're done with them and we're both done with them, I take them and give them to the library. And, and J. A. Jantz, who has become somebody we speak to frequently, uh, feels good about that because she wants more people to be able to read it. But I have a couple of uh, books. Uh, I have a series of books that I, one set I bought called The History of Civilization by Will and Ariel Durant, which is, of course, the historians always can slant things in their favor, but they did a great job in being pretty objective. And they go all from, from the beginnings of civilization, Mesopotamia to, China to the, and the interaction of people. So I, that's a favorite of mine. And I, it's about, each book is about a thousand pages and every five or six years, I start going through and reading it all over again, uh, just as a, as a review for that. So those are the kind of books that I'll probably never get rid of. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of books like on the film industry and things like that, uh, making budgets and all those kind of things that I, when we need to, we know how to do. So I'm slowly but surely emptying all of these books out of here. And then I have reference books like on Photoshop and uh, how to get the best stuff out of YouTube and things like that. So uh, I'm, I'm sort of in a phase of getting rid of them because it's now more clutter than anything else. Yeah. Well, you know, guys, have, I, I, I'm of the distinct opinion that books, literally print books, are... Um, almost an ancient form, because I can remember when they were so popular that uh, on television they would be selling a, a series of classic books and special bindings. And oh, don't forget Book of the Month Club. Book of the Month Club. Reader's Digest would come out with a new issue of uh, a, a classic book, and you'd put it on you know, for your library. Mm. Nobody even thinks of that way anymore. Yeah, times have changed regarding uh, regarding that, though. As I still say, and my wife is the same way, we prefer, I, I will read on Kindle, and I've gotten some deals on Kindle, so that's sometimes maybe it's a monetary thing for folks. Uh, and it's also all your books in one little place if it's right. not taking up as much space. But if you've got the space, we just we just prefer books. Yeah, also, you know what? I'm going to give us a new term, and it spans not just baby boomers, but the people before and after, is we're the tactile generation. I still can't read a newspaper online. Okay. Yep. If I don't have the, the, the paper in my hands and the 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 ink that comes off that I'll have to wash off later on and the just the, the odor of it, if the 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 aroma of it, the musk yep. of it all, uh that's just something that uh I find pleasing and it's part of the pleasure of reading a book or that. I have a hard time reading electronic books. I really do. So when I go to the gym, right. I don't bring a Kindle or anything like that. I just, it's not the same to me, you know, doing this, okay, as opposed right. to turning the page is uh, something, you know what, that's probably something that I'll, I'll just take with me for the next 20, 30 years. Yeah. You know, the, the online stuff you talk about, newspapers online, mm -hmm. the main problem I have with that is there are so many pop-up ads yeah. that it becomes almost unreadable. Yeah. You will be trying to read, and then boom, Yeah, there's an ad in front of your face. Then you make the wrong click, and you've exited out of the whole website. Um, unless you're willing to pay for them right. not to show you an ad. Well, newspapers are losing so much money that they're, they're trying to come up with some way to do it. But, I mean, I used, to, I used to get a USA Today every day. Well, now they're $2 a copy, and they're, and they're probably 50% content of what they're used to be. So I don't—, I don't it anymore. 
Well, if you want it for free, you have to go to a hotel because I think they still stuff one under your door uh, at most hotels, high, low brow or anything else. Also, when you read stuff online, somebody's tracking you. So if you just read a book about uh, a J.A. A. Jansen and uh, Maseratis, uh, and you read enough of the kind of books or references to a Maserati, uh, you'll start getting ads in your Facebook feed. So there, everybody who's online are hey, summoned hey, to everybody. Hey, you know what? If you're going to be paranoid about that kind of stuff, you may as well just shut everything down. We were we were on vacation down on the coast here about a month or so ago. We met some folks. Turns out he works in the town where we live. He lives elsewhere, but he works in this town. And he referenced that he worked at the John Deere plant, you know, the riding lawnmowers and stuff, the mm. farm equipment, yeah. John Deere. I went back into our place where we were staying. I activated my phone. First ad to pop up, John Deere. <laughs> the phone had been in my back pocket. This thing yeah. is listening all the time. It's not just Alexa and all that stuff. Yeah. These phones listen all the time. <laughs> well, you know what? I guess a, a, a whole other show. Yeah, the other show, yeah, because uh, basically now, instead of getting uh, Dear John letters, you get uh, uh, Dear John emails. Right. John Dear emails. Yep. All right. Well, listen, nevertheless, read a good book. That's the important thing. And well, you know, and I'll leave you my part. I'll leave you with this great quote. And I think it's a Mark Twain quote. He who does not read is no better off than he who cannot read. Ooh, yeah. good quote. Oh, well, so we got quote. serious here for a moment. Wow. There's another book you ought to have on your nightstand and keep it forever and ever. It's called Embrace the Boom, My 15 Practices for a Calmer, Better, More Fulfilling Life as we get a little bit older. But really, it's wisdom for all ages. But It really but, is. And, and your, Embrace the Boom. Well, it's embrace part of my boom. permanent collection. Yeah. Well, I'm going to keep this one, too. There you go. <laughs> and, See you soon. And I, I, sometimes I, I thumb through it with a hot cup of Java in this oversized cup made yeah, for both lefties oh, man. We're going, and we're righties. We're going full out, aren't we? Okay. Yeah. What is going on? <laughs> Appreciate okay. it, guys. I'm Talk us out. Talk. I expect a commission on this one. Uh, I expect something. <laughs> okay. Talk us out, Bill. Well, again, uh, live your life, forget your age, and embrace the boom. And you can find this in the mugs and uh, link to all my YouTube videos about the topic at BillJordanEmbraceTheBoom.com. Thanks, guys. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.